Well, hey there, YouTube. It's PD Two Finger, and I'm um, the gears are spinning. Talking about the incredibly silly spring thing. So I have three different spring reverb tanks, and I have a solenoid. Solenoid is going to make contact with the spring, uh, and I'm going to. It's going to be a self-contained uh, noise box. <clears throat> so it'll have a stereo amplifier, <clears throat> maybe a pair of speakers, maybe one speaker and a horn. I like using these horns. Um, I may go with a jury rig for the spring, uh, powering the spring, or I may actually build a circuit for it. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to try just slapping an amplifier on the front and, and the back of it and see if I can get it to do what I need it to do with just that, with a PAM 8610, a little Class D board that I have. <clears throat> I've got a, a couple of them. I got a three watt and a five, uh, ten watt or something. So it's basically going to be a battery pack, uh, amplifier, three PT twenty three ninety nine delays, and just daisy chain. And then, unless I could think of a better way to do that, um. I think daisy chaining them is the best way. So yeah, it, it will be uh, this button that fires a solenoid into, and a solenoid is just like a metal plunger that's going to make contact with the spring. So it'll make a racket. And then I could also, if I have a stereo amplifier connected to the input and output of this spring, I could also play around with a filter and a feedback circuit. Um, I could put an Atari Punk console in front of it um, or a sine wave oscillator. I gotta see, I gotta see what, what I'm gonna end up uh, doing with this, but I've got this cash box, this gray metal cash box. I might very well use that. There's, I've got some tools and some junk sitting in that box and I could I can always find another a replacement for it so this is one of the things I'm going to be working on uh, waiting on parts I had ordered the PT 2399 in June and it's still not here and I I look at it it says oh that's coming October 20th so I ordered more today I um, I've got some coming, which will then enable me to. Cut. I mean, they're three bucks. It's not. It's not like it's gonna break the bank. So, I, I'm gonna end up doing three of them. And that's the idea behind the incredible spring thing. Incredibly silly spring thing is what I'm gonna call it. If you have any ideas, uh, I'd love to hear them. And I'm just, my mind is just going like, I don't, I'm not sure how many momentary context switches I have left. I had these really cute uh, black and red ones, and I ran out of those. I'm not sure where I, where I picked those up. I think they was just on an eBay auction. But man, I'm getting really sick of waiting, waiting around on, on uh, uh, AliExpress deliveries. It's like, I, I get that the stuff is cheap, and... Uh, you don't pay a real lot for the shipping, but the idea of waiting months. <laughs> did, you, did you get those packages today? I did. I did. The packages that came today. Um, nothing too inspiring. It, it was the Fleor stuff, the, the Switch. That broke on the on the bootlegger and uh, the potentiometers to replace in that, and I I have these special pots or um, uh, they're they're knobs that have rubber grommets on them. They're so cool, and that that's what I'm gonna uh, install. That I'm just waiting because they I I bought pickups from IKN, and they were advertised as. 13 to 14 K on the bridge and I got it was eight so I complained and they're gonna send me you know, I'll, I'll end up getting stuck with this eight eight um, I'll need go humbucker but I got 
quote unquote for free for, for waiting another how long and like they they responded she was like well we got to check with the warehouse and we'll send out a replacement it's like well could I have a tracking number or confirmation that you sent it out because you know it's again um The idea of like having a concept or an idea, designing it in your head, like coming up with all that. And then it's it's two months later, the parts come. So that's uh, one of the reasons I make these videos is because if I go through this process, then it's kind of cemented in my brain. And I can always go back and watch it. So uh, thank you for joining me on this one. It's gonna be uh, something like I've had this idea a long, long, long time ago. I, I saw Deep Purple and John Lord was dropping his, he would like do a wheelie with his Hammond organ and drop it and it would make this crash noise. And that's what I'm, that's basically what this is, but it's going to have an echo on it. Should be fun. All right, you guys, I will talk to you soon. Um, Today, I did some finishing work, painting, priming, and painting. I'm going to be cutting this chassis, this aluminum chassis, uh, to make this bass amplifier. And we took care of the cabinet under that band. It was a lot of work. It was like one thing leading into another. Like, why did you go in the, why did you go in the closet? Which closet? Oh, my drill broke. My Ryobi 18 volt drill, the, you click this thing to forward and reverse it and that clicker stopped working. It was like it was stuck and then I popped it, I managed to pop it in and then the next time I went to pop it back it was just loose. So something broke in that, in that Ryobi drill and I asked Comte to go look in the, the I, I have some boxes large car, heavy duty cardboard boxes that have some power tools in them in my closet. And she went in there to look for that and discovered upside down mic stand bases. And it was full of oil, like, like this much motor, like gr green motor oil. And she's like, I swore I saw this before. This happened before. Yeah, and I don't. I thought we took care of it. I mean, I can't believe it's been in there for all those years. And where and does the oil come from? I, she I says, As, are these things making the oil? <laughs> so then it we was like, oil in the that led to her kind of like cleaning and going through it. And, and then I, like, I went to remove the speaker by myself. And the cabinet is shaped like it has an angle and it was sitting on top of another cabinet. And when I went to that screw that was on the other side, it just tipped over and the screwdriver nicked it. And it's, it's the nicest speaker I own. It's this EV Focus or Force, Force 12 that we got new in the box. I was hyperventilating when we found it. It was $6.99 at Salvation Army. Like someone had bought it, never installed, brand new. So anyway, um, that happened and I was super pissed. Because I normally I would have said, hey Gompti, come in here and hold this thing while I unscrew it. Well, she was busy working the closet. And I, I didn't want to be like, just keep on constantly bugging her. And then I, I the Phillips screwdriver put a little a little tiny tear in this speaker. So, of course, I patched it up. You use uh, Elmer's glue and toilet paper is what you use. And I, I cut out a little, I took a piece of paper, folded it, and, and cut out a section of that paper that was the same size of the damage and then laid that paper over there and then shot black paint over it so you don't squeeze the Sherman. So... At some point, I've got this other speaker. It's an MCM 55 2962. It's like a, it's kind of a sub E or full range, like a 12, like a cheap, like $18 speaker, but it's a good, good speaker for the money. I've got that speaker and I'm gonna, it was in this chassis. I needed to switch them. 
because the chat the the really good speaker was in a larger like a PA cabinet and I wanted to put in the smaller one for the bass. So and this is something I've wanted to do for for like for years, literally years I wanted to do this and I never did it. And I go to do it and then when I bring the other speaker back in, Chicky Bobitin comes running in and jumps up to go into the amplifier. Somehow he knows when things are that empty. The, when it's empty. Somehow he knows. He can't see it, but he knows it's empty with his fucking cat dar radar or whatever he's got. So Chicky, I'm telling you how this was. It was there was one amp. Someone <clears throat> got the stuff out of the closet, and it's there's no room in this room. It's just shit everywhere. And it used to be the kids' room, and they never really cleaned it out. And we're working on that now. It's now it's full of their stuff, and then oh, my my it's our stuff music now. here. It's really not their stuff so, anymore. This way, this was laid out was bad, and it was wobbly. It was a cluster, a bumble. It, it was a disaster waiting to happen, and I already nicked the speaker. Then, Chicken Bull Beat goes leaping in in to this thing. While we're walking in with the speaker, and we're we're both like, and then of course, it goes fall. This cabinet goes falling off of the other cabinet, and this is like eleven thirty at night. Everyone's sleeping up there. Boom, boom, shaking the whole apartment. Then I had the the screen door open for a second, and up oh, chicken Bobby escapes. I I left it open. I think he went on his two venture his adventure, and scrammed. And Gopti went out there and pulled his tail. Get over here, <laughs> little bastard. <laughs> what did he I do? I didn't pull it that hard. I just... I, <laughs> she I was him. like, no! Yeah, I, I wanted to just grab him, but I thought he'd run, so I kind of pulled it, held his tail and then grabbed him. A little him. bit, And yeah. he, he did a little, you know, and I was like, get in the house. <laughs> No, no. Or, and like, because he won't. If go I ca- if I carry him and bring him, I'll I'll be like, we're gonna look outside, and I'll open the door, and he's like, Rear! like <laughs> scratching me and like leaping over my head to like get away. And then when I leave the door open, it's his idea, and it's it's okay. So yeah, um, this amp, what it's gonna be? My little brother had dropped off some stuff here. It was like. One of the things was a PV Basic 50, which is like, it's a 12-inch speaker, kind of a crappy bass speaker, but and it's it's a 50-watt bass amp in, in a real heavy, like rock-solid cabinet, super heavy cabinet. Um, and someone had messed around with the speaker jack and put like wired in an external speaker jack on it and uh, that thing never worked right. Like I worked on it, I replaced some capacitors and um, it would like work and then it would start smoking. And so anyway, I was like, you know what, fuck that PV. I threw it out and then I threw, I, I took the speaker out of it, I took the speaker grill, took the PV emblem, took everything I, that I needed and then I had like the head part of it, like the aluminum uh, tray that holds the amp and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, man, I could build, like, I could take that and, like, with a little bit of woodwork, I could build an amp, and it would, like, look really amp-like because it's an amp, you know? It would look cool. So that's, that's I ended up, I told Gompti, I'm like, I'm going to throw this away. I don't want to waste a bunch of money and build another amp we're not going to use. And then she went up to pick up a pizza, and I ran out there and got it out of the garbage, and now... Now I'm, I'm building that amp. So it's going to be a, a Sans Amp bass driver uh, circuit. I've got the PC. 21 bucks for the fucking PCB for this thing. He's the only guy that, that carries it. So he charges 21 bucks for it. And then I had to order parts. And I was like, you know what? I might as well just get fucking 24 millimeter pots while I'm at it. Because that's my new thing, is I, I don't want to be using small pots anymore. I want the big ones. So it, it's going to be like the amp build of a lifetime. Like, I am going to do this really neatly and really right and take my time. And that's what I was working on today, was we got 
most of the work on the cabinet done. We switched the speaker. The crossover, I wired in a switch, a toggle switch to defeat the, uh, there's a tweeter. And of course that was all, that, that crossover that was in there was bad. It was old and it was a three-way. So this is a two-way. So anyway, um, I, that's what I'm gonna be working on. Uh, we had done the Zam amp with this 10 in it and I did, uh, I did uh, uh, lacquer. I put lacquer on that. So it stunk the place up. And, um, Ganti had a horrible migraine, thought she was gonna throw up and I'm sure the, the, the smell was probably part of it. No, that was, no, that was on the way home from, it was at work. Okay, Somebody so yeah, it's, it's been a busy day and um, like I've got, I've got to do this guitar replace the pickups and electronics. I've got to do this incredibly silly spring thing. Then I've got this amplifier. And uh, this stuff should keep me busy through the spring. Usually I'll do one amp um, from the end of the summer music season to the spring when we go back out again. I'll, I'll build an amp. And I really like that. I really lo I love building amps. Um, it's like it's not like building pedals where I'm in a hurry to get it done. I can kind of like, I'm going to do this little bit and then tomorrow I'm going to do a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean like 12, 18 hour of work. Um, and you think, oh, Petey, he's such a poor, and I am, I'm a total goof, I'm a hack. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I've built, a real lot of these things and they all work none of them have ever ever broken down we had we had two bad amp boards we had one where uh, the ground on a class D the grounds on the output they can't be connected and they were because of the chassis and I didn't realize it. it was some weird locking jacks that I installed that I didn't think that they that they grounded out to the chassis because I had tested them and the, I didn't poke the meter hard enough and they did and it was like some aluminum looking metal, like this crappy briefcase that I built it into. And I thought that that's not conductive and it was. And so of course I was thinking it was something I had done. And when they sent me that amp board, the, the volume pot, the heat shrunk it. And the heat shrink came, shrunk and it crammed the volume pot in. So I had to cut, I had to remove that order replacement pot and cut it in. So it was like, it, it, the whole thing was bad. And I eventually figured it out after a couple of weeks of like, it wasn't weeks, it was a couple of days, but I was flipping out. So I had that one issue <laughs> and uh, hopefully this one will go fine, but I'm really excited about this one. And what it's gonna be is this uh, EV Force 12, um, I'm, that's the speaker. And then there's going to be a two-way crossover that I can defeat the tweeter on it. Maybe even defeat the, the crossover. i got to figure out how to wire that in. Probably, that's probably what I'm going to do is use a DPDT switch and have the power wires come into the center two tabs and have one tab go to the crossover and the other tab go right to the speaker. And I'm using like super thick gauge wires. Like I'm really gonna do this well, even on the tweeter, you know? So uh, it's gonna be that killer 12. And then I'll build a buffer and I'm probably gonna do the clon buffer or a buffer that runs off of a op amp, not a JFET and it's going to be running off of 12 volts. The, the SANS amp, I'm going to run that off 12 volts. It's going to be a 12 volt pack on one side and a 24 volt pack on the other. It's probably how I'm going to do it. Now there's always a chance there won't be enough room in this thing and that's a whole nother thing is getting all the batteries to fit inside of it. Like I can mount the circuitry, I can mount the circuitry to the roof, to the lid and then have the batteries in the bottom. So I should, I should be able to fit everything because I really like to run a DPDT power switch and have two power rails, one for the preamp and one for the power amp. That's just the way I like to do it.
I mean, you can, you can always take a voltage regulator or a buck step down, but it it's I mean it's apples and oranges, and that's just the way that I like to do it, and I think it's better. I really do. Having a dedicated power source for each thing, it's any guy that knows it's worth their salt is going to tell you. Yeah, it's more work. It's not as efficient. It adds more weight. You're using more batteries, but it's just way better. And with these uh, 7809, uh, 18650 batteries that I like to use, you have your choice running it off of 8.4 volts or 12.6. And I'm going for 12.6. So it's the regular TDA 3116D2 mono amp board uh, that I use. It's rated at 100 watts with this uh, this 12. And I'm guessing this is going to be the base amp. This is going to be the one. And I'm not sure when we're going to be running it like we just built this ZAM, which is a 10, and it's lighter weight. And if we're going to be doing micro remotes, which that's the plan, I want to get the micro remote set up to where there really is no weak part in it. And my guitar is so freaking loud with these uh, outdoor speakers that I got with the 50 by 50 amp. Uh, it was so freak. It sounds so good, too. Man, does it sound good. Um So that would be like, instead of using smaller stuff for the mains, uh, a little bit bigger, you know? And I, 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 we're running four speakers for the mains. I have these two like treble speakers, like one's just a tweet, like a bullet tweeter, like an automotive bullet tweeter. And the other one is a, it's an energy brand, like a little bookshelf speaker that's kind of smaller. It's a little bit more shrill, like you would have to have a subwoofer for it. So without those, like it's a whole air, like there's a real lot of trouble coming off of that setup, which is awesome. It, 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 and we have on the MP3 player, I have this switch that's the BBE Sonic Maximizer chip. So it's like an EQ with a smile curve. So you click that on and man, it's, it sounds really good. Like the quality of the sound is awesome. And I have that same switch on my guitar. I'm turning it on. I was thinking, Am I going to put one in the base? Pro probably not, but I, m I may end up doing because I've got I've got a couple here as backup. So I may end up there might be some toggles, you know, like I, I know it's got a ground lift and it's got a switch to run it at line level or low level. And rather than just, like not include those, I mean, I don't have a real lot of room in the front panel, but the back panel, there's plenty of room. So this project is all about kind of doing it right. I'm excited about this base amp project. I, I'm really excited about it. And once the parts start arriving for the, uh, you know, I should get this PT2399 delay soon. I know um, the, the other ones that I ordered, I think they said the 17th, so that's two weeks. So, um, but again, like this is all a waiting game and tomorrow I'm going to cut the chassis. It's, it's this aluminum and I've got a jigsaw and I've got some assorted blades and I'm not a big, uh, I don't like that stuff. I really don't like, you know, but, um, and it's kind of a goofy thing. Like one side of the pan is lower than the other. So I got to have a wood thing, a panel in there that I, I painted that black today and to cut all that stuff up and do some drilling and put running screws into it. And I'll probably be like a couple of like four wood screws through the bottom of this thing where I'll countersink holes. And then on the other side, it's probably going to be um, nut and bolt sets maybe. I don't know. It, 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 on the other side, it's going to be like a thinner board for the base and then like a quarter inch and then that aluminum. And I need those. I need to fasten those together. So 
Uh, I am going to have large rubber feet in the bottom of this amp head, so that gives me room to just drill it out and run uh, nut and bolt sets in there. So it's going to be kind of like this. You know, one day I do the painting, the next day I cut it and run some, drill some holes and run some screws in it. You know, that's, that's how it is with building amps. It's not like when you do a pedal when it's this marathon thing, you've got, I've got to get it done in, in one session. And that's probably why I enjoy the process of amp building, because I'll tell you guys, I love building amps. I love it. You know, you got a little bit more room, and it's like large gauge wires. I got my uh, one-handed wire stripper, this big, huge, we're just sticking them in the flux and smoke shooting out of it. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, I kept you guys here way too long. I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, for a guy who retired, I certainly have a lot of stuff on my list. Anyway, I'm going to eat some pizza and watch some TV and get some rest. It's been a great day. I've, had, I've really had a great summer uh, working in the kitchen with my wife. So I just wanted to let her know how much I appreciate all that time. I know she would probably rather be in here on her laptop just doing her thing. But I really do enjoy spending time with her. And she's been a great help. Uh, so I do appreciate that time we spend together. And it's hard on Kita because he, he prefers for us to sit here how he's been trained where he'll sit 15 feet away from us and ignore us. So if we're in the kitchen, he's like, yeah, like, hey, what, what are you doing? And come on, come on in here so I can ignore you. <laughs> anyway, you guys, I'll talk to you soon. Oh, here he is. We get to see Maybe. the bad boy. He escaped. He escaped. Hello, Chicken Bobby. He's a pretty nice friend. He's a pretty nice friend here, Chicken Bobby. A Chicken Bobby. A Chicken Bobby. Yeah, do you have to be Chicken Bobby? You want to get down? Oh, yeah, but they're petty. Petty, petty. He's a nice friend. Every day. Petty, petty. One, two, three. He is a nice little chicken, chicken, chicken. He's a good boy. Every time. He's a nice friend. Every day. He doesn't run. Never runs away. He's a nice friend. Every day. How about a bushy, bushy, bushy? You want to show everybody how we do? Oh, 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 he doesn't want to show anybody anything. How about I, how about I do it here a bit? Bushy, bushy, bushy. It is of your favorite bushy, bushy. Oh, 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 no, Daddy didn't use it to brush his butt. It still smells pretty good. Yeah. It's only Keita's brush. Yeah. Okay. You can go. Go uppy, uppy boy. He's doing his parkour again. And, and now he's going to turn around and sit and stare at me because <laughs> I owe him treats now for that. He gets treats. Yeah, he's right here staring at me. All right, you guys. <laughs> oh, Mama gives you a treat. And, and when I say a treat, it's because she only gets one. I get in trouble for giving him four. It's like one and a little piece of another one. <laughs> Gumpty does pretty good of making sure uh, portion control. All right, you guys, take care of yourselves. Try to stay warm. And peace.